Now, okay, wait, Courtney does have a question for you. I'm calling you Big Daddy Kane. Yeah, I, I, I'm just gonna call you Kane, that's cool. I mean, that's everybody else called me, man. My man. He, he said he can't call a grown ass man Big Daddy Kane. I said, maybe I got daddy issues, but I have been in love with some Big Daddy Kane for as long as I can remember. Thank you so much, young lady. I appreciate it. I truly appreciate it. Uh, and it's all right, brother. You know, you know, just, 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 just be the best you, man. You know, <laughs> hey, man, you legendary in my eyes, man, bro. I, man, me and my cousin, we used to rock out to you, bro. So I mean, if if he knows that I'm talking to you, I can't wait to tell him. That's love, man. Well, I appreciate you being here. The first thing I did was I had to call my man. Like, as soon as I got the okay that you were going to be on the show, I hit him and he said, don't get fucked up. I said, I'm sorry, it's Big Daddy Kane. I love you. I'm, I'm different. But you made me love chocolate. Oh, that's cool. Cool. <laughs> so, see, there, see there, Courtney? I'm on your side. <laughs> <laughs> when did you fall in love with hip-hop? Um, I fell in love with hip hop, I would say probably, um, uh, uh, I think it might be either 77 or 79. I can't remember whatever year on um, bounce rock skate road came out from Vaughn Mason. You know, it was like, I was already hearing it, you know, there was a park jams that everybody go to and, you know, we would go to C spots, but did that particular year that, that, that park jam was just, you know, monumental it was like uh one of those things where it was something new you know because i was so used to everybody getting on the mic watching them rhyme to love is the message or um watching them rhyme to that song bra and then here came this new groove and then i was hearing different stuff other than the rhymes i was hearing and like you know um the mid to um late 70s like anywhere between like um 75 to um 79 you know i was hearing different rhymes then you know and it was just like you know this is this is something else, and I just fell in love then. I love it. Hip hop then and hip hop now are two totally different things, and you were definitely one of the goats of hip hop. How do you feel now that the gatekeepers of hip hop are basically strippers? <laughs> you know, um, I've, I'm one of the type of people that always respect the changing of the guard. So um, there's something that a younger generation likes and relates to. That may not be my cup of tea, but um, you know, um, I, I you know, I, I I respect you know um younger cats, you know, um, being into what they're into. Um, I just hope that it um changes in a way where even even if the sound stays the same, um, I just hope it changes in a way where there's more positive message being um, brought across, you know, and um you know respect for one another as artists so that we can be the voices teaching our listeners, you know? That's something that those boys don't do anymore. MCs used to come back and grab onto the youth and teach the youth. If you could talk to the young rappers of today, what kind of lesson would you give them about what's missing in the community? Um, well, I mean, in the com well, you talking about in the community or you talking about in the rap game? In the rap game, in the, in the community of hip hop. Okay. Um, well, basically, I would tell, you know, um, the young artists and the young MCs that um, what they have to um, really understand is like, you know, hip hop today is really based on being an artist in the same fashion as R&B, pop, country, rock and roll. And it's like, but you have hip hop fans. Mm -hmm. And the last thing you want is like, you know, a hip hop fan to be saying, uh, like, um, let's just say, um, Brother Courtney is a new artist, you know, um, and his rap name is Court Dog. You want people to say, yo, you heard that new joint from Court Dog? Oh man, that shit is crazy. Yeah, man, Mustard did the beat. Okay, then that means that Court Dog is irrelevant. Mustard is the star. He's the important one, you know? Yeah. Now, if he says, yo, you heard that new Cord Dog joint? Yo, this dude said such and such and such. Now you're the star because your lyrics are what's most important. That's what's grabbing the people as opposed to the music. It's like, you know, in, 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 in my era, 
it was, you know, the artist's lyrics that appealed to the people. That's what you were repeating. That's when you would constantly hit the rewind button over and over. Yo, did you hear that? No, nah, nah, I don't think you heard it. Listen one more time, right. you know? So, I mean, I think that that's the thing that really builds the artist up. You know, when they just like you just because of the beat, then you're really just making the producer a star, not you. Yeah. Absolutely. And DJs aren't DJs anymore. Like DJ Academics, he's not a DJ, but he's made his platform off of hip hop. How do you feel I mean, about that? You know, I, I, I got Serato, you know, I got Serato, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I call myself DJ Dark Gable, you know, and I, I'm, 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 I'm nice with them blends. I be killing them. Mm -hmm. Only difference is, I only do it for myself. I don't do it at parties because I'm not going, that's why one thing I respect about Kid Capri, Jazzy Jeff, and DJ Scratch and so many others, you know, they can go on stage um, and play whatever the audience want to hear. Yeah. See, with me, you know, ain't no way in hell. I'm not playing nothing I don't want to listen to. That's why I can never really be a DJ, <laughs> you know? I love it. Court, you want to go? Uh, yeah, I got man. I well, first of all, how proud are you of Jay-Z? And when you first met him, did you ever think that he would be what he is now? When I first met him, no. Because I had, uh, had Jay-Z, I had Positive K, and I had Sauce Money. And um, it was like Sauce was just so cocky and arrogant and reminded me of myself. And Paz, you know, Paz had already had records out actually before I did. You know, um, like he had independent songs out. So he understood the rap game. He toured with light. So he understood the rap game. He was more seasoned. So I really thought that it would be one of them. You know, Jay was, you know, just, um, you know, my favorite, you know. But, um, you know, he was a real, you know, quiet dude. So I honestly didn't see it being what it is today. But I am very, very proud of him because, you know, there's so many, uh, I mean, so many people that we took him to. You know, I mean, I even took him to, um, you know, um, one lady I was messing with to try to get him a deal and she wouldn't do it. And now look at him. I guarantee you all of them wish they signed him now. Was that when he was rapping fast and then he changed? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, Do It All was on the show right before you. And Do It All showed us the booth that you were rapping in. He said you came. And when he was a young kid, he used to write down your lyrics so that he could practice being an MC himself. Oh yeah, do it all. Do it all is dope. I love him. I do too. But he gave you big ups right before you got on. He said, "Make sure you tell Kane I said hello and tell him thank you." He graced his booth right here. He said he'll never forget it. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember what it was for. Um, but yeah, I remember uh, we came through and um, 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 did something at his studio. Yeah. You know, for me, um, let me ask you this question. Let me see. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to exactly a word it. Around your time when you was like in your prime prime, Hammer came out and like people, like a lot of the MCs was like, oh, what he doing? He doing all this dancing and stuff like that. But you was able to go and do your set, do your show and still pull off the dance moves and then nobody say nothing. Because they respected you because you came. Like, how, 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 I don't know what exactly the question is, but like, how how was yeah, you? You already answered it. Kane. <laughs> <You can't. laughs> Big Daddy Kane didn't make songs; he made anthems. Right. I still live by those anthems. You think so? Thank I'm you. Not, yes. It wasn't just you know how people would come out and they make summer songs, and then after the summer you forget that the song ever existed. That's something I always credited Naughty for. I always called them the king of the anthems. I thought that no one made, you know, anthem songs like Naughty by Nature. Like they were just, they just mastered that, you know? I have a five-year-old. This morning, she was in the kitchen talking about, I go to work. joint right there. So. I just need to know the secret. You know what I'm saying? Big up to Teddy Riley, because that was his idea for the hook. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Ted. Uh, Ken, okay, so I was a little girl when you came out, and I have been in love with you my whole entire life. Before you started getting into the music industry, were you still a sex symbol? Like in school and stuff? Nah. Nah, I talk about that all the time, you know. I mean, it was the type of stuff where cats would come from other schools, you know, like Western House, Brooklyn Tech, Eastern District, 
um, boys and girls, they come up to um, my high school, Sarah J. Hill, um, wanting to battle. I come outside because I was with a crew then called the Debonair Three. It was me and a brother named Understanding and AB. And like lots of times I would battle like three or four people by myself, yeah. you know. And at the end of the battle, you know, all the dudes in school was like, gang, yo, you killed them. Yo, you rep for the school. Yo, you did that thing. The girls, you know, they'd be like, so AB, where you going, boo? You know, that, <laughs> they wasn't thinking about my ass, you know, for real, you know, that, that, really? that came like really after records. So how did you handle all the attention so quick? Like looking back at it now, you're a rock star. Uh, <laughs> if you say so, you know. Humble and sweet. Come on, man. You just you make you it so work. humble, man. You big daddy K, man. Nah, I mean, you know, I'm hey, I'm 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 just me, man. You know, um everything that um I've done, I've always done for the love of music, you know, um, and my passion as an MC, you know, um, just trying to show people just how lyrical I am, just trying to show people stuff that I've seen around the world so that they want to, you know, do something with their life and be inspired, um, you know, just trying to show people um, the, a broader spectrum of music because, you know, when you talk about hip hop, you can talk about um, where um, rapping started, um, where DJing started, but there is no origin of the music because it all comes from so many different genres. So that's something I always try to expose people to. And that, that's really, you know, the job I try to perform as Big Daddy Kane, you know, um, being a sex symbol is just one of the perks that came with it, but that wasn't, you know, it's what, what that wasn't my purpose, you know. Really? So that wasn't something that was thought of in a in a conference room or anything? No, 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 no. Like I said, it was just something that just came with the job, you know. But yeah. but trust me, I rode the hell out of it though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how close um I, I saw an interview you did um back in the day, I think it might have been with T V one, and you were talking about um when when Bad Boy first started and you were saying that you were like, you could have been like real close to like signing with them or something like that? Um, no, 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 no. Um, it was actually um, Def Row that tried to sign me, not Bad Boy. Oh, oh. Yeah. oh wow. Oh, yeah. Oh. As much as I would have wanted you on the West Coast with me, I'm glad you didn't do that. <laughs> you know, I remember actually meeting you in person one time and I made a complete fool out of myself. We were at Will Smith and Jada Pinkett had a old school party. Oh, Jada's birthday party. Yes. And you were walking in and I damn near jumped off the wall and on you. And I said, Big Daddy Kane, I don't loved you my whole life. And you looked at me and you gave me a hug and you patted me on my head. But I just want to say thank you because you were so sweet and so kind. I never forgot it. And that's been like what twenty something years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. So, wow, yeah. Yeah, that means a lot. Um, the Grammy board classifications of hip hop is in some hot water right now, becoming of album or record of the year. How do you feel about that? Becoming the way, what? The, the, way the Grammys classified hip hop. Um, you know, let me let me tell you my honest opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, that's their thing, you know, that's a system that they developed, um, for who they considered artists and what they consider real music. And that's their thing, you know, back in the days, um, we had the soul train awards that was so strong that so many pop artists like Mariah Carey and many others wanted to come and be a part of that. Mm -hmm. But we didn't support what we had. That's real tough. Because it's like, you know, to me, if that's their thing, let them have their thing. We need to have our thing. You know what I'm saying? We need to get um, the Quincy Jones, um, Patti LaBelle, um, Jay-Z, you know, um, Dr. Dre, you know, um, maybe even Stevie Wonder. Um, we need to get our own committee together that's judging these songs and have our own awards, you know what I'm saying, where, where they, they represent us, 
That's what we need instead of worrying about what they're doing. That's their thing. Let them have it. Let's create our own. And we the people have to support it because the Soul Train Awards was real strong where all those pop artists wanted to be a part of that. You know what I'm saying? So we need to have our own. Absolutely. So what do you feel about Puffy's 365 ultimatum to boycott the Grammys? Um, I mean, go for it. I mean, go for it. I mean, at, at the end of the day, I think that having our own is just so much better because um, we know our music. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, it's like, you know, it's like, I can't be mad at someone that don't understand hip hop or don't understand R&B. You know what I'm saying? I might be mad at the judgment you make, but you don't know it. It's like, um, I don't know if you remember, there's an old D.L. Hewley stand up when he was saying that his teacher was like, um, Beethoven was classic. Do you remember what year he wrote his fifth century? And he was like, bitch, I sure don't, but I can tell you what year Parliament made flashlight. You know? <laughs> yeah, and that's, it's real like that. It's just real like that. That is true. What'd you go say, Court? I, well, you know what, man? I, we were just talking about, you know, like the eras that the 90s, man, you know, like when being a, having a music video and stuff, it was just such a big deal and, you know, concerts and stuff like that. I just want to know, could you tell me like a, a nice road story, man? Something, something funny, man, or something just that might have happened on the road that nobody never heard of, or maybe it's people you told the story before, but I ain't never heard. Um, hmm. Being on tour, trouble. like being on tour. Now, yeah, I don't want to get you in trouble. Like, <laughs> you know, you know? Nah, nothing, nothing, nothing real crazy. I mean, a lot of crazy things come to mind, but stuff that I couldn't really tell, you know? <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to get you in trouble. Look, let me get you out of trouble. Um, How do you pick your beats? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I mean, you know, just stuff that, that, that moved me, you know, I love stuff with a, 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 a real, um, soulful feel, you know, I, I love when something has a real soulful feel or when it's something that's, um, challenging, you know, um, uh, like just recently, um, uh, White Shadow gave me something that I would never have rhymed on in a million years. But I was like, I'm curious to see what I could do with this, you know? And, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, he was very pleased. I was like, wow, okay, cool, cool. You That's know? awesome. And you're going to be All-Star Weekend, right? Don't you have some shows going on in Chicago All-Star Weekend? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll be out there um, along with um, Talib Kweli, um, Raekwon, Jeez. and Slick Rick, I believe. That's going to be dope. When so you first got, here's, here's a question. When you first got your, like, I know a lot of basketball players ask this too, but when you got your first big check, what's the first thing you spent it on? Like, uh, the time, like the real, like real money. Like what you what you spent it on? Um, probably it was a car. Yeah, probably it was what a car. Kind of car. What kind of car? Uh, what did I get the first car? I think I bought a Volvo. Mm -hmm. You know, like back then, like you know, um, it was like um. The Volvos, the Sobs, yeah, and um, BBS rims, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like those was like real popular then. I want to know was popular. What have you not done yet that you've always wanted to do? Um, what have I not done yet? Yeah, whether it be career wise or personal. Um, something that I wanted, wanted to do that I haven't done yet is um, uh, teach hip hop classes. Like um, I've done it, um, I believe once, or no, I think twice, I believe for Ninth Wonder um, at Central University. And I, I've done it at a college in Greensboro as well. But it's something that I would like to make a continuous thing, you know, um, just really just talking about hip hop in an art form, you know, because I just feel like there's so many biased opinions by a lot of people because, you know, it's important that, um, you know, Bronx get credit for this, um, Queens get credit for that, Brooklyn get credit for that, where as, you know, really it's just in a whole, Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, wherever you're from, um, 
You're just teaching people, you know, what the art form is about and showing them the correct way, but in a fun way where it's interesting to them, that they feel challenged, that they want to, you know, try to do it that way. That's amazing. So Professor Kane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that something we have to I look at? I got a nice ring. I got a nice ring. If, if an artist, like, run up on you trying to, like, like, I know the demo tapes is done now, but, like, like when artists try to get at you, like, what do you look, what do you look for if, like, if you want, if you're interested in them? Like, what do they have to have? Like, what, like, catches your eye in an artist? Um, I mean, at this point in time, because it's like, you know, I'm so disconnected, you know, from the younger generation. Yeah. Um, at this point in time, it would be that originality and that hunger. Right. Those would be the main things. Someone that's real hungry, that really wants it, and someone that's original and like, I, you know, like they know they're original. Yeah. Therefore, you know, even though they might be, you know, someone may steer them to try to make them sound like everyone else, they know a way of, you know, escaping that box and showcasing their originality. Yeah. You talk about being disconnected. I'm sorry, Courtney. Is there anybody that you would want to collaborate with that's out now? Um, J. Cole. J. Cole is probably like my yeah. favorite of the new generation. Um, yeah. I would love to work with J. Cole. Um, and, um, I've, I've had the opportunity, I believe, like twice to work with Rhapsody. She's another one of my favorites. Um, uh, Logic. Um, uh, Kendrick Lamar, you know. Yeah. Wordsmiths. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Courtney, what were you going to ask him? It, it fell off my, go ahead, it'll come back to me. <laughs> okay. Are you interested in doing some more acting? Absolutely. I mean, that's what I've really been um, uh, focusing on. Um, at, the, at the present time, I'm, um, I'm filming a documentary and um, uh, we, you know, we just started a film company and um, we're, gonna, um, we, we, we're, we're trying to shop this um, 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 biopic um, right now at the, moment as well, at the moment as well. But right now I'm filming this documentary and um, yeah, acting, yeah, I'd like to get you know, back into that a little more too. Can you tell us about the documentary at all? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called Paragraphs I Manifest. And, you know, it's about, basically about me, um, you know, growing up and what inspired me to rap and um, uh, um, um, like the, the artists that I looked up to and um, like the skill of battle rapping and, you know, how I used it and writing for other people, you know, like Bismarck, Key, Roxanne, Shantae, Rick James, and others, you know, and, and stuff like that. And, you know, yeah. You said the paragraphs of manifest. Manifest. Paragraphs of manifest. That's a that's a line from you know half step. Okay, so manifestation is huge with me. Sits huge with me, and I be hitting Courtney over the head with it. Um, do you feel like you've manifested your whole life? No. 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 <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think that um, I think that there's more um to be told because um things are just starting to really come around you know it's like one of those situations where um uh like let's just say that a guy um breaks up with a girl because she's not exciting and she's not a dime and then he gets with a dime and she don't really got time for him. She's not into nothing he's into. He doesn't like anything that she does. They're just, you know, not, not compatible in any way, shape, or form, and it's going sour. And then that's when he realizes, damn, yeah. I should have stayed with, you know, the queen that I had, Word. you know? And I feel like that's what's happening in life now you know, um, the mistakes that have been made in hip hop. Um, I think that it's, it's at a point now where people are starting to like really say like, okay, how can we fix this? You know? Yeah. And um, so therefore I think that no, my story is not over because I, I feel like I can be a part of the solution. And when I say that, I don't mean as an artist. Right. I don't mean as an artist. As a gatekeeper. I, I already did that. 
and I have fun doing it. I mean, you know, um, and, you know, as a supervisor or, or teacher or whatever word you want to use. Professor. I like professor. professor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> professor, your word. There you go. Show you that. <laughs> hey, um, um, I don't mean to bring the, bring the, bring the show down, but I do got to ask you this. Um, Jay-Z has always said he's the Michael Jordan of hip hop. So if that's true, then that means you got to be Dr. J. But let me ask you this. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, brother. Let me ask you this. Rappers, basket, rappers and basketball players, basketball players and rappers. What do you think, how did you feel about the loss of Kobe Bryant? Um, I mean, I was just um, on Instagram and I saw a post that said, no, not Kobe. So I just Googled it. And when I saw what happened, like I was really in a state of shock. You know, I was like really in a state of shock, like, wow, this is unreal, you know, because um, this was a young brother and, you know, one of the greats, you know, um, I probably would have him in my top five, you know, I mean, one of the greats in the NBA and young, man, you know, and, um, you know, watching him grow through the NBA to the person that he became. You know, I thought was a beautiful thing, man. I had the opportunity to meet the brother once and, you know, it was crazy because they told me that, you know, he was cocky and arrogant and this and that and yada yada. So when I met him, you know, it was like, you know, I was a little standoffish and he was like, yeah, my man, such and such, um, had played some of your stuff for me. Um, I used to tell him that I thought, you know, such and such was the greatest rapper. And he was like, you need to hear Big Daddy Kane. He played some of your stuff. And I was like, yo, and I started buying your stuff, man. And I think, and I was just like, wow you know, like a maze. So it's like I had nothing but the utmost respect for this young brother. So to hear that, you know, it really hit the heart, you know. Yeah. And then like an hour later, to find about, you know, his daughter, yeah. you know, like that's when it was like, you know, um, I put up a rest in peace post, logged off of Instagram, went and grabbed my seven year old and I just hugged him for about 10 minutes straight, man. You know, I just hugged him for about 10 minutes straight. You who know. you think is, who? who is, if you're Dr. J, Hove is Jordan, who is hip hop's Kobe Bryant in your opinion? Um, hmm. um, I don't know, what, what's the generation after J? Um, uh, I don't know, would it be Eminem? Oh, Eminem, I like that one. Maybe M? I like that one. Real MCs holding on to the art. That's real. Hey, you threw, you I threw love it. That one. I wasn't expecting that answer. That's pretty good. What's yeah. your relationship like with social media? Because I have a love-hate relationship with it. But you actually are on there. You answer people back. That's how I found you. Thank you so much. <laughs> What's your I, relationship like? I mean, you know, I like, I like communicating with my supporters, you know. Especially hearing, you know, what they think, you know, um, you know, I mean, you know, I, I mean, you know, I'm me and I'm, I'm gonna always be me and do me. But, you know, sometimes, you know, some, sometimes you might hear something that's inspiring, you know, or something where I never thought about that. Mm. You know, so I try to communicate when I can, you know, when I see this, uh, you know, an intelligent conversation. Um, you know, then sometimes I, I, I reply to people just to be sarcastic because they have some dumb shit, you know, but I mean, but most of the time, you know, it's, you know, an intelligent conversation, you know, but I mean, you know, I, um, these are my, fo my, my followers, you know, these people support me, you know, so I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think it's fair to just, you know, just put something up and then that's that, you know, you know, I want them to let you know that I, I see you. You know, so sometimes, you know, I might be just hitting the like because of what they said, you know, but I want to know that, yeah, I see you, I see what you said, you know, and, uh, you know, we together, you know. That means a lot. I told Courtney, I turned into a straight groupie, like, you saw my post and you liked it. And I, and I was like, okay, Courtney, I'm going to try to brace myself. I'm not going to be a groupie today. And Courtney was <laughs> like, what, is that, what does that mean? And I said, not like the sense of what groupie is today. I ain't going to try to hump on Big Daddy Kane, but I love me some big daddy came. Thank you, sister. Thank so, you. Sister. No, we appreciate that. I appreciate you being here. This show means so much to me because you were definitely one of the goats of hip hop. Yes. One last thing. If you could give this new generation just a little bit of a game, what would you tell them? 
Well, I mean, uh, as I said earlier, you know, it's important to be yourself, you know? I think it's very important to be yourself and be uh, original, you know? Don't get trapped where you're just part of a structure that, you know, um, where uh, you turn the radio on lots of times and it sounds like one long ass song playing for eight hours, you know? You have to be able to be identified with, you know, where they know who you are. They, you know, like I, back in the days, I used to say, you know, um, they, they want, they want to, um, you know, have your picture in their notebook. But I mean, you know, we passed them days. So let me say, use you as their screensaver. You know, you want to be someone's screensaver. You know what I'm saying? You want to be on their wall. You know, you want them to want to dress like you. You want them to want to say, um, you know, different slang words that you say, you know? They have to really identify with you. So it's very important that you be original and don't follow the trend because when that trend is gone, you gone. Mm -hmm. The only way you're going to last have any state power is if you gave them something original that they digest and they, 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 they took to it. You know, it became a part of their life, you know, it became a part of their life. When people can say, man, growing up through high school, you got me through it. You know, oh, my college days, I used to, you know, say that's when, you know, you, you're going to have that state power. You have to be original. That's one of the most important things. The other thing I would definitely tell them is that when you enter into this music business, acknowledge those two words, music business. Just like you take care of your music, take care of your business. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Can't ask for more than that. Now, Professor Kane, when you start teaching, can you please come back and give us like a, a, a quick little lesson? Absolutely, young lady. <laughs> I appreciate you, sir. You're dope, man. Beyond dope. Thank you. Much respect, my brother. It's a pleasure talking to you, brother. I'll catch you in Chicago, too, man. I'm going to be there. So you're right, man. Looking forward. <laughs> yes, Thank you so much. You done made my whole year. <laughs>